Hello everyone, this is Sidekick Jason here again with a very special guest, Mike O'Donnell, the original co-composer for the Thomas and Friends television series. Mike has just released the Engine Themes Volume 3 CD featuring eight tracks, including two brand new exclusive themes. These tracks are all exclusive to this CD release. You won't find these anywhere else on the internet. Click the link below in the description to purchase a copy. Volume 1 has already sold out, and Volume 2 is in limited supply, so don't wait. To kick off this part of the Q&A, Mike, let's talk about Volume 3. Can you tell us about the track list? It starts off with Jazzy James, which is obviously James's jazzy track, which is really good fun and very exciting. And then I went on and did the Viaduct theme, which apparently is um, very popular in the fandom, so I decided to do that one. Um, the Milk Train is a new track, um, obviously done in the Thomas vein, and um, it's something that just popped into my brain. I thought it sounds like it might have been, could have been used for, if there was, a shot for the Milk Train, so hence that. Arthur is one of the old original characters, uh, he didn't get a lot of airplay, so I'll, I'll read on that one. Um, and then we move on to Oliver, Oliver's theme, which has got a tiny little bit of um, the escape part of Oliver. I mean, a tiny little bit, because uh, it doesn't really suit it otherwise. But anyway, sounds good to me. Um, and uh, that's what Friends are for, which is obviously a nice track. I'm singing on that one. Um, and also, uh, I've done duke the dog which is duke's theme maybe could have been um but it's named after my good friend jason and his dog really <laughs> he's always stealing his socks so that would have been a good thomas episode actually uh, <laughs> and also i've done um uh, i've released the backing track for uh, that's what friends are for so you can play around with it yourselves if you want and that's about it really well that that sounds awesome um the, you, you've shared the themes with me. They're the the preliminary versions of them, and they they sound absolutely amazing. And and I just have to say personally how grateful I am, and I, I really appreciate the kind gesture of you naming the the song after my dog. I, I was joking with my wife. I was like, my my dog got a Thomas theme out of any person I've known in the world. My dog of all people gets the gets the theme. So I thought well, that that was really I'm funny. Dog lover, and I don't have a dog right now, so I've. Um... I'm sort of latched onto yours. Well, that that is awesome, and I I really appreciate it. And I I've heard the theme, and I definitely think it's one that could also fit Duke the Narrow Gauge Engine as well. So it can kind of be both of theirs. Absolutely, um, absolutely. I did want to ask you for so when when people get this album and they they listen to the new themes, specifically the Milk Train theme, there's mm -hmm. um there's a part in it where there's kind of a a whistle that's heard. Um, but it's not any particular engine's whistle. Can you kind of describe what, what that's supposed to be? Um, well, it is like a, not a ghostly whistle, but it is, it is a whistle, what we would have done, but I'm not using the original. I don't have the Jupiter 6 anymore, so I can't replicate the original whistle sound we did. Um, but that's pretty close, and it's, uh, it's just a musical whistle, basically, that's all. Mm, okay. Well, it sounds amazing, and I think fans are going to be really excited to hear it. Thank you. I hope so. All right. Well, let's let's dive into the next section of the Q and A. Um, so we had lots and lots of questions regarding uh, your personal favorites, it, your your favorite color, your favorite character, your favorite theme, and so I I compiled all of those questions and all the duplicates down into a section where we just ask you your favorite for for each different thing. So that that is this next section. So to start out, what is your all time favorite theme you've written? Well, it has to be the Thomas theme, doesn't it, really? Um, that's the one that kicked it all off. So I have to say that's my favorite. Well, that, that's fitting. Um, now on the opposite side, what's been your least favorite theme you've ever written for the Thomas universe? That's an impossible question. I don't really have um, the worst one, not the least favorite. <laughs> I actually do like them all. I mean, uh, you know, they're all so different. And um, so, and I, 
I would, or we would never have submitted a theme that we didn't like. So mm-hmm. it's, um, you know, because it's our name that's on it. So no, I don't have a least favorite one, I'm afraid. Well, that, that is good to hear. Um, now tell us, who is your favorite Thomas character? Not not their theme, but the actual character themselves. Um, well, it may be surprising, but I like Percy because he's such a cheeky little chap. And um, I, I I don't know why, but as soon as I saw him, I always had a thing for him. I thought he, he was a great little character. Well, I, I think the theme you wrote for him is so perfect to his personality. So. Well, thank you. This uh, I I totally agree with you there. Although a lot of people didn't like it, they thought oh, that's a bit you know weird. But really. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I think it grows on you. Well, it certainly grew on me anyway. So it was that during the production of the first season before everything was released that there was kind of some pushback on it? Uh, not serious pushback. It, I mean, Brett loved it. Uh, um, Junior did well, and Junior did. I mean, it was just a couple of people. I can't remember who even they were now. Um, you know, and it might have been someone in the art department or something like that. Ooh, that's a bit of a strange one. But, you know, that's what it was. Percy's team. He's a bit weird. Well, that that's great. Um, what is your favorite Thomas episode? Oh, there are so many. I I really enjoyed working on Escape, you know, with Oliver, where he, mm-hmm. where he escaped the um, the nasty place he was stuck in. That, that was that was great for us to work on. Really good, and because mm-hmm. uh, it was quite cinem- cinema, what's the word for it? Cinematic. Well, cinematic, yeah, in a way, musically, you know, because it was very difficult to piece it all together. Well, I think it worked really well, actually. Uh, great. I mean, David Mitten did some fantastic shots in there. So it was good. Good. Very good. I like it. Absolutely agree. And in fact, Escape, in the polls that have been done in the fandom um, over the years, Escape has always come out as one of the top all-time favorites for fans. So you, you right. must be a true fan. <laughs> yeah, I am. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, now tell us, what is your least favorite or one that you weren't as big of a fan of uh, episode from the classic seasons? Um, that's a difficult question. I, you know, we just um, we just carried on going through it. It wasn't like you didn't like... Sometimes you look at the film and you think, this is a tricky one. And it's easy just to say, well, I don't like this one. But once you've worked on it and put the music on it, it kind of all pulled it together. So, again, I'm sorry to disappoint, but I don't have a least favorite one. All right. Well, that works. Now, can you tell us your favorite Thomas song? Uh, from a personal point of view, obviously the Thomas anthem I really liked, and um, and also Gone Fishing, which was a really fun and a bit and slightly different from the usual Thomas stuff. And it was just a, a nice little track. You know, it worked well. Mm-hmm. Are there any? Um significant meanings or, or special memories that are associated with these favorite tracks that, that that are kind of the reason why these are some of your favorites? No, I mean, the, the Thomas Anthem was a big one. I mean, when you think about it, you know, there's like the Island song was great. I, you know, I, I'm not being big headed about it, but there was some good stuff in there and um, and uh, really enjoyed working on it. And because it was early days for us, we hadn't done this before, so it was it was really a challenge, you know, but I think it worked well. And, and Gone Fishing, I would say, is, and the Thomas Anthem is probably my two favorite ones. Mm-hmm. Well, to- the Thomas Anthem is my personal favorite too. So I, I definitely oh. feel you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us, what what is one of your absolute favorite memories from working on the show? Um, there's so many to choose from, but what I, Overall, what I loved, enjoyed the most was going to the dubs, to um, where they, the dub is where they match up the uh, visuals, the narration, the film, all together and mix it all together. That's the finished product. And we were lucky enough to go to the dubbing sessions. And um, it was just so exciting to see it all come together like that, because that's the first time we'd heard it with the real narration, um, sound effects, um, and all the rest of it. So you know, that was, I, I really enjoyed the dogs. That was my thing. And also, awesome. also it meant we'd finished the season. So I mean, it was a, it was holiday time for us as well. 
<laughs> so, so you wouldn't get to that phase until the very end after you had written the all of the episodes and they, they would bring them all together there at the end. It, it wasn't yeah. sprinkled I, throughout? No, 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 no. Uh, for certainly the first few seasons, it was all done at the very end. Everything was in place. It was all there. The editors had stuck it all together. And then it was just a question of Alex audio and um, and the narration and the sound effects. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay, now which season did you have the most fun composing for in terms of the, the settings, the, the, the theme styles, the characters? Which, which was kind of your favorite time? I think series or, yeah, season three uh, was one of the best because we kind of got the audition by that stage. We were... Um, we were accepted by everyone and uh, we were able just to um, experiment a bit um, without worrying too much and uh, there was some good stuff came out of season three and season four I would say as well they were the two best mm -hmm. makes sense um, do you have a favorite location or setting uh, on the island of Sodor um I've got to come back to Escape again. I, I thought what David did for that was absolutely brilliant and um, he, he deserved more recognition than he got for that. And so I think the, the set for Escape was was stunning. Really good, that one. Yeah, makes sense. Now, do you have a favorite theme from Tugs? I know you had kind of talked before how there's not really specific character themes, but is there a favorite piece or, or specific part that, that you're attached to? Well, to me, it's got to be the um, opening theme. I mean, I thought it was uh, the boat, it, although it sounded a bit 80s, because that's when it was. Um, it was um, it was a lovely piece of music, and um, it worked so well. Um, yeah, so it's got to be the main main title theme, I think. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have a favorite episode from Tugs? Uh, I think one of the best ones was pirate was it called pirate yes it was called pirate and it had mm -hmm. grampus in it and all the um the nasty, naughty pirates and everything that was a great episode that i mean they they were difficult to work on because they were a lot longer and much more complicated but um i like pirate i thought that was a good episode mm -hmm. awesome um what is your favorite character from tugs well i mean i, I like i like big mac actually i thought he was great <laughs> he's one of those bungling heroes you know but um no he was a good character i thought uh, and um yeah i know i liked him a lot i liked him a lot or oj was another one because don't mm. forget i recorded all the vocals for tugs down at our studio bluebird at shepperton mm -hmm. so um and all the actors were in the studio together all round about four or five mics and and read through the script it was like an old-fashioned um uh, old-fashioned play really um mm -hmm. the bbc it was such good fun to do and um having all the different characters with all the different um, um uh, voices was absolutely mm -hmm. brilliant the whole thing came to life for me then so so that that was good fun you know it was um yeah it was good i enjoyed doing that so. uh, that's awesome um, okay, last favorite question, not related to Thomas or Tugs. What is your favorite food? Well, I'm having one later tonight. I do love a curry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know why, I just always like curries. But I also love a bit of roast beef. So um, uh, it, it, those are the two, really, I think, my favorites. Well, that's great. Um, not not a question particularly about favorites, but this was one that was asked. Um, if you personally were to voice one Thomas character, who would you like it to be? Oh, well, I mean, that's a tricky one, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I don't uh, like it to be. I'd like... Uh, actually, Bertie's a funny character. I quite like Bertie. Although I'm not sure, did he actually have any dialogue in the series? He did. He did. Did he? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, now Bertie. I like Bertie, yeah. I'll go for Bertie. Bertie the boss. <laughs> awesome. All right. Now, the next section, 
is related to specific uh, themes and some questions specifically about certain characters' themes or, you know, kind of, kind of diving into the, more of the details. Um, this first question, if you had to pick one for any particular character's themes, either Thomas, Percy, James, whoever, do you generally prefer the version from the earliest seasons, like seasons one through four, or the, the themes that were kind of done in the later seasons, five through seven? If you had to pick one. Do you mean a theme that was done in series one through four and then redone in mm -hmm. series five and seven? Yes. Do you have a preference? Do you prefer the, the original earlier version or what was done in the later seasons? I know you, you've mentioned before about it getting kind of Tom and Jerry like towards the later seasons. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, the Thomas theme was done so many times in so many different ways. Um, so that's got to be up there because um, it went from the original Chop Chop type stuff on series one. And then series six and seven, we were doing some really not complicated, but much more orchestral stuff on Thomas. So I'd have to say it was Thomas, really. So would you prefer the, the early version or the later version if you had to pick one? Oh, that's a question, isn't it? <laughs> um, well, it, the, the early version is what it is. That's the main character theme. So mm -hmm. you can't really get away from that. You can just do it differently. I don't really have a preference between one or the other because they each did different things. It was, uh, you know, we were progressing um, technically, uh, which made us, so the orchestral stuff became much easier to do than it did in the early days. But, you know, a lot of the fans liked the really early stuff, and, um, and I do too. Percy's a prime example as well. I mean, the Percy original theme was very early, and um, but then Percy ended up quite orchestral as well, and it was, uh, it was, it, it had its moments, both of them. So it's difficult to mm -hmm. to separate them. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, it's great that you love them both. Um, mm -hmm. This next question is, you know, I, I'll read the question itself. This, this is a particular one from, from one fan. Um, he says, Mike said in an interview that the main Thomas theme was based off the song Mean Mr. Mustard by the Beatles. So I was wondering if James's theme may have been based off the Beatles' Penny Lane, as both tracks share a similar rundown of the scale on the bass line. So the question I'm proposing is, was James's theme based off Penny Lane? Uh, the quick answer is no. Um, it just it, it just came out. It wasn't deliberately thought to do it like Penny Lane, because that's the only similarity, really, when you think about it. Mm -hmm. um, so no, it's it's not based on Penny Lane. It just uh, it just came out of a woodwork, as well as say. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, was there a particular theme that was more difficult to make than the others, or or took more time than the others to make? Uh, do you mean sequence or theme? Uh, either. Okay. Well, there's two really complicated sequences. One was. Thomas's race with Bertie, mm -hmm. um, because this was early days. We didn't have, um, you know, cue based or logic then. It was literally done on multi track, and there was no time code either. So everything had to be done with chinograph markings and bits of tape and things like that. It was real early days. So, that, so to get it right and to get it right at the time uh, was very difficult, I and mean, that was Thomas's race with Bertie. And the other one was Oliver's Escape, because uh, mm -hmm. that spanned quite a lot, you know. So, um, and we had to hit all the white points and all the rest of it. So, yeah. much easier nowadays with with uh, time code and cue base. And all that. Makes sense. Well, it, it it was worth it because those are some of the best episodes out there. <laughs> well, thanks for saying that, Jason. Yeah, but it's it's true that they were difficult to do. But um, I remember when we did. Um, escape for, for Oliver. Dave Mitten was so pleased with it that he brought all the um, crew in to the studio and uh, so they could listen to it because they you know they could see it with the visuals <laughs> and it was quite flattering for him to do that so he, he really liked that one. That's so neat. Did, it, was there any other times during the the production that, that he did something like that? No. <laughs> That's so neat. <laughs> 
Yeah. Was, I think fun. I think it was one of his favorite film sequences as well. So because uh, obviously there was a lot of work involved with creating that, and um, mm. I, I think he was so chuffed with uh, with that particular theme because it was it was loosely based on um, uh, the Great Escape, mm -hmm. which was uh, Steve McQueen and um, what's his name? Those English actors, American actors, and mm -hmm. um, so that you know, it, it just it just fitted well. I think. I think. I think we did do a good job on that one. Dave thought as well. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so th this next question is interesting. Um, so, I, from my understanding, the the Jack and the Pack series was originally filmed back around the time of season six and seven. However, it wasn't released to the public until years later after Hit Entertainment was in control and mm -hmm. they used um, their, their, the, uh, the newer themes for, for the actual release. And so the question is, is there a chance that the lost themes that were originally composed for Jack and the Pack could be released in future CDs of yours as recreated tracks? Um, I don't think so because uh, again, when we did Jack in the Pack, we didn't want to get tied into doing individual themes for all the characters. So, although there was different pieces of music, um, it was all incidental music, really. And um, uh, it, it was one of those shows that didn't really come off, in my mind. It was, um, it was a, I think it was Phil Furl's idea, who was around at the time, but it didn't really didn't really work for us we did it but i mean obviously hit changed it anyway so um mm -hmm. no but i don't think i'll dig any of the old stuff out i don't think so okay makes sense um in your opinion which theme is the scariest that you've composed <laughs> the, well the... i'm gonna say uh, sorry Oh, I was going to say, is it uh, Percy's ghostly trick or maybe the, the dragon theme from Thomas Percy and the dragon? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say um, Percy's ghostly trick, you know, the one on the ghost train where he was, mm -hmm. um, there was that thing where he was flying over the viaduct at the beginning, I remember, and it looked like he'd got a toilet roll stuck to him. It was <laughs> yeah. they, with a bit of paper hanging off. But uh, so it wasn't really scary, scary, but it was. You know, I think again, David did a great job, and um, you know, doing the music for that side of things is quite easy. Mm -hmm. uh, the pictures. Um, this next question is: Which theme is the saddest, in your opinion, that you composed? It's got to be Henry's theme when he's bricked up in the tunnel, and that's such a sad episode. And um, mm -hmm. although it, it isn't the Flying Kipper theme, you know, it's a variation on Henry's theme that was. Uh, particularly sad, I think. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it all worked out in the end, as they say. It, it, it did. I, I would say, in my personal opinion, I think the only thing that rivals that one is the theme that's played uh, for Duke when he's trapped in the shed all those years and, and oh, his yeah. shed gets buried. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that now, yeah. It's amazing when you sort of get bodied about these things and all of a sudden you realize, oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm sticking my <laughs> head now. I'm sorry. Yep. Um, is there a chance in the future that you would write songs with lyrics um, for specific character themes that, that never received them in the earlier years, like Edward, Henry, and Gordon? Um, well, um, we're not going to get commissioned to do this, so I've got to say there's no chance, really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all the songs we wrote were, were commissioned, and they were also briefed we knew exactly what we had to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, you couldn't do it without Rick and David's input, really. And um, mm -hmm. sadly, that's not going to happen. So uh, I've got to say the chances are slim to nil. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, OK, this next question, there was actually several comments asking about this one. Um, so that they want to know, was Oliver's theme based on the Tug's rescue theme? Uh, okay, well, I've got a timeline problem with this question. Had we already done Oliver before Tugs came along? No, Oliver came after Tugs. Did it? Mm -hmm. Did he, rather? Um, 
No, it wasn't based on um, on anything. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was based on, as I said, the um, the Great Escape um, musically, and um, I can't remember who wrote that. One of the great English film composers did it, and um, it was uh, it was kind of very loosely based on that. So it wasn't based on on the Tugs Rescue Team, I'm afraid. No. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, this next question, what was the inspiration for Stepney's theme? It's just a nice little big melody um, bouncing along. I like that track. I thought it worked well. And um, yeah, there was no real, you know, it was just that was his character. So that's that's the inspiration. You get the inspiration mm -hmm. from the character. Makes sense. Um, so People are wondering what was the inspiration for for what they call the watermill theme um, from the opening of the season two episode Wrong Road. Do you know which theme I'm, I'm referring to? <laughs> yes. That yeah. Well, that's typical like water music, if you like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, just one of those nice lilting uh, water themes. There was no. Um, Again, there was no inspiration. Well, the inspiration came from the visuals, but that's what, you know, we, we thought water mills were like, really. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, okay, this next question. Was the theme that was used for Bulgy in season seven in the episode Bulgy um, Rides Again, was that theme originally made or the idea for it back in season three when Bulgy initially debuted? Uh, I would have to say yes, because although he didn't do much in series three, did he? It was like a like a, a more of a musical sound effect than an actual theme, if I yeah. remember. Um, so it was originally made for season three. He didn't really do much more with it in season seven, if my memory serves well, but I could be wrong on this. Um, mm -hmm. So that's the best I can answer that one. It was originally made for season three. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. For the, the next question, um, what was your inspiration for writing some of the more obscure songs like Percy's Seaside Trip or The Red Balloon? And I think that they're, they're referring obscure, meaning that they're not based on, on a particular episode or, or plot point. No. Um, I mean, The Red Balloon was, um, I thought that was a nice piece of music now. and it was mm -hmm. just um it was just flying over the fields in, in a balloon and i don't have you ever been in a balloon they don't make any noise apart from the when they release the you know flames mm -hmm. of heat that make the high or low and um it was all the people playing the cricket and all the rest of it although it wasn't about a theme it was about a feeling you know mm -hmm. it's difficult to describe but that's that's what we got and percy seaside trip well I remember as a kid uh, being in my mum and dad's car and the excitement when you saw the sea for the first time because you'd be driving for hours and then all of a sudden you would see the sea and I, and I thought that would be a nice line to put in there. And, uh, <laughs> it was just how kids felt about going to the seaside, that's all, and they mm -hmm. had to go in with Percy. Yeah. Um, for Percy Seaside Trip, was that one that you guys had proposed, or was that a one that you were briefed on by Britt and David, and they had come up with the idea? Yeah, we were we were briefed. Um, although that, from what I can remember, there wasn't much of a brief. It was just like Percy's going to take the kids down to the seaside. That's the brief. Mm -hmm. So uh, interesting. It, it was just remembering things that we did when we were kids to be able to shape the lyrics into. In, in the mm -hmm. Okay, we are now on our last um, set of questions. These questions are about modern day, current, uh, where things are for for you and and your thoughts on Thomas and everything. Um, so we'll we'll dive in here, and this will be the last section we we go through. Um, the first question is: Are you still in contact with Junior? Um, occasionally, we don't really um, socialize anymore. I mean, we were together for something crazy, like 20 odd years, uh, living in each other's pockets. And, um, so when it all finished, um, 
you know, it really did finish. And um, he, he wanted to retire, I think, and just spend his time gardening. So sadly, we don't, you know, I don't, I mean, I could phone him up tomorrow and it would be like, we have never lost touch. You know, so it's, because guys can do that. Women can't do it. They have to keep talking all the time. But men can do that. They can pick up where they're left off very easily. So uh, I've not fallen out with him or anything. We just don't socialize that much. Makes sense. Um, next question. Are you still in contact with Brit? Uh, yes. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> she emails me and occasionally phones and stuff like that. So she's got a lot going on in her life right now. But uh, yeah, no, I'm still in contact with Brit. And I went to a friend's wedding in... Um, in America a few years back and um, I looked her up and we had a nice lunch and uh, it was good. Yeah. No, I'm still in touch with her. Oh, that's awesome. Um, are you still in contact with um, any other crew members from the original show? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. We we kind of, once we left Shepparton, we didn't really uh, keep in touch with the guys. Everyone went their own ways, really, you know. Mm -hmm. So, the quick answer is, I'm afraid not. Okay. Uh, next question, do you still have copies today of all of the original themes and scores and everything? I do. When we left um, Shepparton, um, I took DAF copies of everything. Although you can't use them for anything. I mean, they're not, the, you know, they're owned by um, Hit Entertainment or whoever they are, Mattel now, I suppose. So I couldn't use them, but uh, I do have copies of them. Not the originals. The originals went to uh, Mattel or Hit at the time. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, what are your thoughts on Robert and Peter Hartshorn's Thomas music? I think it's really good. Or well, they don't you do it anymore, do they? they do no, they? no, they're not the current composers yeah. now. I thought they were really good. The only thing, uh, it's not their fault, I believe. Because I miss all the individual character themes. I think they could have mm -hmm. done a good job uh, still using those. Um, but, you know, that wasn't to be so. But I you know they're professional guys and they know what they're doing. I think they did a really good job. Having said mm -hmm. that, again, I think I'd have liked to have heard the, uh, the character themes still being used. That yep. Thing. Makes sense. The The next question kind of relates to that. So people have asked, um, and we've talked about this on, on Twitter, um, but people have wondered if you've seen the the Adventure Begins uh, 2015 Thomas movie and what your thoughts are on that. And you, you've told us before that, that you haven't um, had the chance to see that. But that one of the reasons why fans are so curious to hear your thoughts and opinions is it's the first time since you, you were composing that they had reused those themes. Yeah, no, I haven't seen the film, um, and uh, I'd love to see it, I think. Uh, I had watched snippets where someone said they're using X song or whatever it was, and it's been re-recorded, so I just listened to that out of mm -hmm. curiosity, but I haven't seen the whole film start to finish, no. Okay, well, I think the, the live stream that we had talked about before to get your live reaction yeah. will be something fans will be very interested in the future. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I look forward to it. Um, so from from the the little snippets that you did see, this next question is asking, did you enjoy seeing your themes recreated and brought back? Yes, very much. It's always nice to um, hear your music being, being re-recorded. Um, and, you know, everything I've heard has been really good. So, uh, yes, I did enjoy seeing it. That's great. Um, next question. If you could go back in time, is there anything you would have done differently in how you composed for Thomas? Absolutely not. Um, the only thing that changed for us was the, um, the technical advances that were made sound-wise, you know, orchestras and things like that, and drums even, um, you know, really helped us to... Uh, to bring the music uh, in a funny kind of way up, up to date you know the, the sounds got better and better um, we were very limited at the beginning but you know i wouldn't change a note as they say yeah makes sense that's great to hear um have you ever been recognized while walking down the street for your work on thomas 
No, I haven't. Um, no, I mean, uh, what can I say? I don't know why I am. Well, no, of course I know why I am. I'm not, I'm not a famous person, but uh, no, uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sure they've recognized the name, but probably not the face. <laughs> and the face has changed over the years as well. <laughs> um, next question. Do you have any pets? Uh, I had dogs all my life. Um, for 40 years, I've had various dogs. I'm a dog person. And um, sadly, they're all past now. So, uh, And we've decided not to um, replace them. And it's been... Uh, three or four years now since we've had a dog. So I, 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 I'm I, a surrogate dog owner. I like to go up to people and say, can I stroke your dog? And um, they inevitably say, absolutely. Well, you can borrow Duke anytime. I'm sure right. he would absolutely love to see you. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'd love to, but I, I don't have enough socks left. He eats them, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, the little stink. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, the, the next question is, how do you feel about the new Thomas cartoon reboot, All Engines Go. Mm, I think I think Mattel are really struggling with this. I think they feel they have to change something. And um, I've always been an advocate. If it's not broken, don't fix it. But you know that was changed a long time ago. I think this latest thing just to me makes it look like Dennis and Nasher. It's not. It's not original. I, you know, there's nothing. Really, I'm sure it's very well done and it'll be fun, but it's not Thomas in my mind. Anyway. Makes sense. Uh, next question Do you own any of the models or props from the show? No, not a one. Never even. Well, I remember going into uh, Tea Stage at Shepparton and seeing all the little models and faces, but they were very carefully guarded. I mean, I, we never. No, I had, had an opportunity to have it. No, not a one. Mm. Makes sense. Um, have you seen very many of the online uh, fan theme recreations that, that various YouTube users or, or Thomas fans have done and posted online? And do you have any particular favorites? Um, I have seen them, yes. And, and they're all great. I mean, they do such good work. They, uh, Luke. Pickman uh, is interesting because he um, he has a set of musicians that all that play. Uh, do you, have you seen Luke Pickman? Yes. Work? Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's a great idea. Really good idea. Uh, but there's lots of other people are doing it, you know. So I mean, he's he's not the only one. And um, it's just really nice to see that so many of our themes, um, you know, other musicians like enough to to redo it. It's great. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, next question is, how did you find out about the the current adult Thomas fan base that there is today? Um, do you know something I can't remember? I, I, I sort of went on to Twitter and uh, it all sort of kicked off from there, but I, uh, I don't really know how old the fans are. Um, Sometimes you can tell by the questions, but generally, no, that's that's how I found out. So, that, mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. And long may it last, I'd say. <laughs> well, th this next question, um, what was kind of your decision to, to join Twitter and actually interact with Thomas fans in the community? Because there, there have been other crew members who have been on Twitter or various places, but they just kind of want to keep to themselves and keep private. What's made you want to engage and interact with us? I think that um, because of the, the threat that the classic series is going to dwindle and disappear eventually, mm. um, and obviously Mattel have got no no uh, interest in going back down that road, um, I just thought it was nice to sort of give a bit back, you know, and that's why I've done these CDs and all the rest of it, because it'll soon be forgotten. and. Um, you know, I just I just like the idea that, uh, of communicating with like-minded people who are Thomas fans. Well, I, I can say from the bottom of our hearts, we really appreciate you um, and everything you've done in helping us keep this alive. And it, it really means a lot to us. No, I, 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 it means a lot to me as well. I mean, a lot of, 
you know, it's one of those things we should be really proud of what we did at the time. I know Brit feels very strongly about this. And, um, but again, you know, I don't, there's nothing she can do about the change in the teller making, but, um, you know, that's why we've got to do as much as we can to keep all the, the music and the films and everything going. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Um, next question is, what advice do you have for these uh, online Thomas fan content creators who are making music? What advice do you have for them to make their music sound more Thomasy? <laughs> Well, I mean, a lot of it's down to the composer, if you like. I mean, I've tried to... <clears throat> the new stuff that I've recorded is still in the Thomas vein, although it's new. I've still used the same type of changes and things that I've always used for Thomas, so that helps. You need a good melody and very strong instrument choices. You know, use the right instruments if you can. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Luke Pickman is, is, is off on his own. He's doing stuff his own way, which is which is fine, you know, but it's not the same as the original. So, but you shouldn't be really copying originals. You want to do your own stuff. Yep. You know? And that, that is the beauty of it, that the fandom is able to take the initial starting point you've given and take it in all sorts of different directions and absolutely. expand and build upon it and build the world. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the next question is, uh, how has Thomas impacted your life? Well, uh, I mean, my story at the time was I was working with Junior doing jingles and stuff like that and, and um, bits and pieces and much more into the record business rather than TV. So when we managed to get the Thomas stuff, it was the first film we worked on which was brilliant we absolutely enjoyed it so much um and it lasted for you know 20 years so uh it does change your life and um because that's what i was working on for all those years and uh unfortunately it came to an end but you know nothing goes on forever that's all there is to it makes sense um can you tell us more about the new kids show that you're working on that that's on on your website yeah it's called melody island and um the main character is gramps who's um an old rock and roller and uh loosely based on no one in particular know and uh he's got two grandkids that come down but he lives on this magical island where all everything the buildings sing um everything's music based uh i can't really show you anything else because uh it's not being made yet and you know, I have to say, in this day and age, finding the finance for stuff like this is very, very difficult. But I'm still working on it, and I'm sure it will come out one day. And uh, uh, we've had some lovely um, reactions from uh, various big companies, but uh, you know, unfortunately, the money's just not there right now. So we'll keep plugging away, and one day it'll come out. Okay. Well, hopefully it does. That would be amazing. Um, that is the last question that we have. So we have gone through, I think there was 600 comments originally or something, um, with multiple questions in each one. So, um, we compiled those down, uh, got rid of duplicates and whatnot, and we have now gone through all of those questions. So Mike, thank you so much for taking the time, uh, to sit down with me and to, to just answer these questions for the fans. I know they, they really appreciate it. And it was a neat opportunity for them to be able to have that direct channel of communication to you, to ask them these very, some of these very specific questions and yeah. you being so kind to take the time and, and indulge us in answering these. So we, we just really appreciate it. No, it's, listen, Jason, thank you for asking me because it was your idea. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I've got a lot of time for the Thomas fans um, because without them, you wouldn't have had the hit show in the first place. So I think you've got to give a bit back, you know. So this is no problem at all to me. I enjoy doing it. Well, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, with that, we'll, we'll leave it here. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Um, I think the next time you'll see us is going to be when we do a, a live stream regarding The Adventure Begins. So stay tuned.